Here's an astonishing thing you probably didn't know. In the next few months, there is a good chance astronauts returning to Earth in this, uh, in this thing, I should say, <laughs> rather, will land right here in Utah. And it could make Utah the next major landing strip for space travel. Science and Nature specialist John Hollenhorst and producer Ken Fall traveled to a remote part of Utah and to Florida to learn why preparations are underway for a Utah touchdown. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three, we are going. At Cape Canaveral, Boeing is going back to the future. T minus one minute. Their new Starliner space capsules look a lot like the old Apollo capsules of the 1960s, souped up with totally modern technology. We're very confident that we'll fly this year. Starliner capsules will blast into orbit from this newly built launch tower at historic Launch Pad 41. Uh, the Voyager probes left from this pad. Then went all the way out of the solar all system. All the way out of the solar system, yes, absolutely. And to get to the top of the tower. Dane Drefke of the United Launch Alliance escorted us to the top. So here we are in level 12 for the Crew Access Tower. This is where everything will take place on launch day. The astronauts will load right here, 175 feet above the ground on top of an Atlas V rocket. 1.5 million pounds, 90% of that fuel to take them into low Earth orbit. We have ignition. The U.S. hasn't launched anyone into space since 2011 when the last space shuttle flew. For the last eight years, whenever we wanted to send a U.S. astronaut to the International Space Station, we've had to pay the Russians to launch our space travelers. That's a critical capability that the United States needs to reclaim. And we are very, very thrilled that it's going to happen from right here at this launch pad. Boeing and SpaceX both have NASA contracts to build two entirely different spaceships to get people into orbit. Both companies are hoping to launch soon. Our plan has never been to be first. Our plan has been to be the safest and reliable. This is it. This is the last thing they'll see before they fly away the low Earth orbit. Here's what the mission will look like. The powerful rocket will roar into space. The first test crew has already been chosen. Nicole Mann, Mike Fink, and Chris Ferguson. In the Starliner capsule, they'll rendezvous with the International Space Station and climb aboard. Provide transportation, a service to NASA. When it's time to come home, Starliner will make a fiery re-entry. But instead of landing with wings like the space shuttle or an ocean splashdown like Apollo, Starliner will unfurl enormous parachutes. An airbag cushion will soften the homecoming touchdown. And that might very well happen in Utah. We're looking about between uh, 35 and 45 percent chance that we'd end up at Dugway. Dugway Proving Ground, a sprawling army base in Utah's West Desert, one of five designated landing zones, including two at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Dugway is by far the best area to come to. As a landing site, Dugway has one big advantage, its bigness. The target zone is in a vast government-controlled territory at least 20 miles inside the nearest boundary. Dugway's really big. Uh, and so essentially the size of Rhode Island. On every mission, Boeing and NASA will decide in the last few days which landing site to use, partly based on the timing and trajectory of the re-entry, but also on how muddy or windy it is in the target zones. The primary considerations are uh, first, what are the ground conditions gonna be like? And then second, what are our weather conditions gonna be looking like? Boeing hopes Starliner will do at least one or two launches annually for many years to come. If the program stays on track for years and years, could there be multiple landings in Utah? Absolutely, yes. But all this does not mean it will ever become a spectator event. No, not people on the ground. They could come out, but they won't get very close. With many miles of fences and barbed wire, it's pretty clear that attempted spectators are not welcome. Meaning that they would be stopped if they tried. Certainly. So Utah may once again be the crossroads of the West, this time for space travelers, but most of us will never see it happen. With luck, we may only hear the distant thunder of sonic boom. John Hollenhorst, KSL 5 News, Dugway Proving Ground. John, thank you. Boeing's first test launch scheduled for mid-August. The first mission with a crew is planned by the end of this year. Either mission could land in Utah, and there could be many more after that. We'll just have to listen. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah.